Today is the aftermath of our spring winter storm warning 2020. Jonathan Kovac and Timmons, thanks so much for tuning in. We welcome some new members to both groups as a result of our significant weather. And we also appreciate the support and interest from everyone's liking of the group. When the weather gets nasty, boy, do people ever tune in. It's like the best show on earth. Looking back at what happened with our storm system yesterday, it crossed over Sault Ste. Marie, Elliott Lake, Sudbury by the afternoon, and by the dinner hour, it crossed over the Quebec border, sitting over Rouen Val d'Or. We can see the isobars, which shows you the wind flow as well as the barometric pressure gradient behind the low. As soon as it crossed over our region and departed our region, the wind shifted from northeast to the west northwest, 25, gusting to 60, which is pretty much the case almost all night long. 40 clicks is the maximum wind gust for this morning as we bounce back up from dropping down to 29 inches or 98 and a half kilopascals with the barometer, which is quite low. A significant improvement today, 12 o'clock, 2980 or 101 kilopascals. As the barometer improves and the atmospheric conditions stabilize once again, the winds behind the low will continue to be there. So too will some residual snowflakes. But to answer the question, how did Timmins escape the snowfall? Well, we can't control the way the weather was, even if we had a magic wand or a remote control. Mother Nature is in charge of that. But nonetheless, even though we have a lot of families and friends and a lot of businesses that connect the Northwest with the Southeast, that being Timmins Cochrane, it has a good relationship with the Capitalist Casing Hearst District. Tim has got away with two centimeters or so. I'm just going to put that on ballpark figure. But cap escasing, the large band of snow that surrounded the storm system, chose this specific piece of geography of northeast Ontario to push down at least 40 plus centimeters of snow. The band of snow just nearly missed Timmins. In fact, after the temperatures cooled down to below zero, that band of rain and mixed precip freezing rain ice pellets in the whole nine yards, that disappeared by six o'clock. And then between seven and midnight, we did see pockets of cloudy conditions with no precip, with some light snow and clear breaks going into this morning. So that's what happened, and you can't control the way weather warnings work. Before I say goodbye for good for this edition of our Spring Storm Mornings, I want to take a personal salute to a wonderful person named Joanne Renee, who works at the Capus Casing Airport. Thanks to her observations yesterday, I was able to get the play-by-play -play delivered to you, my audience, from Capus Casing. And I wish everyone in Capus Casing, Hearst, and Smooth Rock Falls a very happy, safe recovery from our snowfall. Stay tuned now for the play-by-play -play for Timmins Capus Casing and yesterday's observations.